Nigeria's economic space, 2019 has been an eventful and historic year. Being an election year, the uncertainty that enveloped the economic and business sectors earlier this year, our correspondent Irene Ubani takes us through some of the major business news in this special report. Nigeria's economic space, 2019 has been an eventful and historical year. Being an election year, the uncertainty that enveloped the economic and the business sectors early this year was thrilling and unpredictable as the Nostradamus in the business sector, including domestic and foreign investors, kept their fingers all crossed. Real GDP grew from 1.89% in the first quarter of 2018 to 2.10% in the first quarter of 2019, followed by a 1.94% in the second quarter and 2.28% in the third quarter. Meanwhile, the stock market heralded the year at over 30,000 points and witnessed the shift as telco companies MTN and Airtel got listed on the stock market, pushing the general activities in the market marginally. However, on a year-to-date basis, the market has declined by over 15%. Meanwhile, there has been a continuous uptick in headline inflation, particularly food inflation, as inflation increased by 11.85% year-on-year in November 2019, with food stock index at a high of 14.48%. According to policymakers in the coming months, the figure is expected to climb even further, following pressure mounted on the presidency by the Nigeria Labour Congress, declaring an indefinite warning strike. The President Mohamed Buhari in April signed into law the implementation of the 30,000 Naira minimum wage. The bill now makes it mandatory for employers of labor in both public and private organizations to pay 30,000 naira as minimum wage. In what the federal government described as the smuggling and dumping of goods and the lack of adherence to ECOWAS rules, the Bahari led administration in August approved the closure of the border. Border can be reopened. There must be concrete engagements with countries that are involved in using their ports and their countries as landing ports for bringing in goods that are smuggled into Nigeria. The CBN also came up with new policies in line with their mandate to bank the unbanked, boost financial inclusion and generate more revenue for the country. The Apex Bank in October directed all banks to exclude individuals and local corporates from investing in open market operation auctions effective from October 23, 2019. This is expected to leave only banks and foreign investors as participants at the auction moving forward. In an attempt to increase lending to the real sector of the Nigerian economy, the Central Bank of Nigeria asked deposit money banks to maintain a minimum loan to deposit ratio of 65% up from the initial 60% with a deadline of December 31st, 2019. The Apex Bank said failure to meet the minimum threshold would result in a levy of additional cash reserve requirement of 50% of the lending shortfall implied by the LDR. Still in the spirit of financial inclusion, the Apex Bank in December also issued adjustments to its electronic banking policies which included the revised charges on electronic funds transfer. According to the new rule, EFTs below 5,000 Naira would incur a charge of 10 Naira Meanwhile, transfers between 5,001 Naira and 50,000 Naira would incur 25 Naira charge, while transfers above 50,000 Naira would attract 50 Naira moving forward. ATM bank charges have also been revised to 35 Naira from 65 Naira when you use other banks' ATM. On Tuesday, December 17, 2019, President Mohamed Buhari signed the $34.62 billion 2020 appropriation bill and equivalent of 10.59 trillion naira into law, which returns Nigeria's budget circle to January to December, a feat that has been a heckling task for each successive administration in the last 20 years. With this landmark achievement in budgeting circle, the year 2019 would go on record as a memorable one, making it the fourth time post-democracy that Nigeria would commence a fiscal year with the running of the appropriation bill from day one. Irene Ubani for Plus TV Africa. 
In August 2019, the Nigerian government announced the partial closure of land borders in the country and was further moved to a full closure in October. Reasons for this, the government said, was due to smuggling of lack and lack of adherence to ECOWAS treaty by neighboring countries. Of particular interest to the government, however, was the smuggling of rice into the country. I have with me here in the studio Anand Pajatia. He is the CEO of Stallion to speak on the impact of the closure on local rice producers. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Thank Certainly. you. Certainly. All right, so I would like to know from the perspective of a producer, prior to the closure, what was the experience like for producers such as um, your so company? So prior to the closure, the procurement of paddy itself was very, very difficult, you know, because the farmers were not very encouraged to produce paddy because there, was, there were no takers for the paddy because the imported rice, the smuggled rice, was much cheaper than the local rice, you know. So the imported rice at that time, we are talking, is selling at 12,000 naira per 50 kg bag, whereas the local rice is not even able to produce at around that price, right? So it was very difficult to compete with an imported rice, which people presume to be much better, you know, long grains and all. So there was a lot of discontentment among farmers because of all this, and so the procurement itself of paddy was very difficult. So prior to border closure, the local rice was not able to compete with the imported rice, both on pricing and on quality perception that was there. And so. in terms of, in all honesty, in terms of quality, the locally produced rice, would you say that they are of higher quality and standard when compared to those that have been imported? And so, what's the quality check of those ones that have been imported anyway, if there is? See, so in <clears> terms of quality it's it's a lot of perception also there because the there's uh, the local rice tends to be more sticky but it's very healthy and i think uh, we have to keep on uh, working on these seeds that we are using to make it better but uh, in terms of quality they, i i won't uh, it would be wrong to say that one is better than other okay. uh, the local rice is pretty good you know we're more healthy you know people do understand that now so uh, it's it's just the perception about that imported rice is more healthier or better than the local rice, which I don't agree to. And in terms of your production procedure there at Stallion, is everything done um, locally? 100% locally, 100% locally. <coughs> so we are in touch with 40,000 farmers across 16 states in the country where we are procuring paddy directly from the farmers. You know, we are working with, directly with the cooperatives and the farmers. And we have uh, collection centers across the country where we okay. go and buy paddy from them and then, uh, you know, uh, process them at our uh, mill in Kano. It's one of the largest mills in the country in Kano. And uh, we produce, uh, we mill this uh, paddy at our, uh, at, our, at our mill in Kano. 100%, all the rice that we are producing locally is 100% done locally. But now when you take a look at what has happened post border closure, what has been the effect on local rice manufacturing producers in the country? I think it is an amazing, it's a boon for them because after the border closure, the demand for local paddy grew significantly, right? So the farmers had a very good reason to put a lot of investment in that. So the, uh, the, there was a lot of paddy there in the market, right? And the, the, the paddy prices also went up because they were wanting to okay. make money. So we saw from August till uh, October, uh, mid of October, there was a serious increase in price. You know, everybody was talking about the price increase that we saw after the border closure, and that became the talk of the town. And there were a lot of uh, things that... So we're talking about how much for a bag of rice? So it, it grew take. from, let's say, we were talking about 13,000, 14,000 naira per bag when before the border closure, which went up to, even it was starting to touch around 25, 27,000 naira per 50 kg bag. But then I think uh, the CBN and the government came into action. We had a lot of uh, discussions with the stakeholders, right? And everybody, because the idea is it's a very good move to close the border. And it's a, it's a collective decision of a nation. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that it's not about uh, just uh, that close the border. This is important for the future of the nation because how do we ensure that a country which can grow so much of paddy, which can grow its own rice, it has, is having to import it. You cannot just go on and have these people compete with the best in the world, which is in the Thailand and the Vietnamese, because they have been in this business for quite, quite long. Sure. And they, they are very, very far ahead in the game. So we need some protection for our local farmers to compete with them. And you know, if you don't take immediate steps, and this is one of the most important steps taken, that we have to protect them some way, right? That, okay, here we are, 
we close the borders, we are protecting it, grow paddy. So if they start making money in the process, that's when the more investments will go into the system. So the paddy, in, after the border closure, the farmers have started getting, uh, you know, uh, more interested in, 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 interested in growing paddy because they're making money about, uh, around it. More paddy is available in the market, so rice producers, the millers are very happy because they can procure paddy, which was one of their big pain points. They are not able to procure paddy, so paddy is available. Okay, the prices are going up, and that's when all the stakeholders came together, uh, you know, okay. along with Ripan, and they said that see, we have to be very careful. We should not make, we should make good of this situation rather than bad. You know, that let's not just get it out of our hand that the price can go anywhere. So all of us decided together that okay, we need to ensure that the prices are kept in check. Right, okay. so that it it, is, it doesn't get out of the hand of a poor p person, you know, mm -hmm. because it was touching 25,000, but I think with a lot of intervention from the government, from everybody, a lot of like-minded thought in, in, in for the good of the nation, we have, I think, been able to ensure that uh, the distributors are getting it in the range of around 14,000, 14,500 Naira, and the end consumer is getting it in the range of 17,000, 17,500 Naira from the stores, which is, which is, I think, a very, very good move, and which has checked the check the inflation that we were seeing at the beginning because people were talking about it will touch 50,000 Naira, mm -hmm. 70,000 Naira and what all talks were going on. Of course, that was not going to I happen. I think an amazing work was done uh, by the key stakeholders to check it. Well, in terms long term now, what should we be focusing on to ensure that this is a very sustainable process and at the end of the day, everyone becomes a winner. It's not that just the farmers are winning and then the consumers are complaining about the pricing. Yeah, very true. So, <coughs> see... We have to ensure that we, first of all, train, educate our farmers. The cost is high, that's why the price is high, right? Now, we have to see how we can better uh, manage the logistics, how to get paddy from the farm to the milling centers. So a lot of work needs to be done on power sector and logistics side mm -hmm. to ensure that the cost itself goes down, right? It's not about that they are making a lot of profit, but they need to make some money. Earlier they were make, maybe not making any money, that's why they were not growing. All right, thank you very much. Because of thank time, you. that's all we can have, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank, thank you very much.